February 3rd, San Diego is a beautiful place, so I've been told. I drive up El Cajon Boulevard past endless pawn shops, pho restaurants, and hand job parlors. The clock reads 7 a.m. Even though it's February, the temperature's already 70-something. It's my first day at Andrew Jackson Post Office, zip code 92115. I arrive to find a huge bald man in the back of the room, just staring, radiating anger and hate like it's the type of pheromone that gets NRA members hard. <laughs> this is Craig, my supervisor and the man who will ruin the next four months of my life. I'm Ryan, I say, the new transitional employee. You military, he asks. Nope, but I used to write internet content. <laughs> I'm introduced to Rick, the carrier who's gonna train me. He greets me with a firm handshake and calls me Mr. Bradford. His face is friendly. No, his face is classic. <laughs> Soft angles, bushy mustache, straight out of cheers. It's my first day and I've already met Cliff Clavin, the Latino version. It was financial necessity and a shallow job market that pushed me to the USPS, but Rick thrives on the pride and civic duty of being a letter carrier. Rick has been with the USPS for 15 years and just one short of retirement. Before that, he was a firefighter. He's tasted the smoky ash of a burning house. I've started flame wars on the internet. <laughs> He's not afraid to run into blazing structures. I've got a fear of improper sentence structure. <laughs> he jiggles my ribs. You're gonna lose a lot of weight, Chubbs. I told that to the other TE, this big fat girl. She didn't like that too much. <laughs> oh, and Rick's not afraid of HR either. Rick's route is a walking route. We park in designated spots, usually on the corner of an intersection, and gather all the mail for the block. Deliver one side, cross the street, deliver the other side, return to the car, and reload. This out and back is called a swing. On average, there are 15 houses per swing, which should take 12 minutes to complete. Break that down and you get 1.25 minutes for each delivery. Rick's route does this 40 times. However, if you take the 480 deliveries of this route, divided by the 330 <laughs> minutes of allotted street time you have to complete it, you have about, you have about 0.69 minutes for each delivery. And these are the th kind of things that haunt your nightmares for the first couple weeks. <laughs> February 17th, first route by myself. Craig assigns me Route 33 and gives me a pep talk that goes something like this. Route 33 is a ghetto route. On penny saver days, they get a lot of mail. They live in apartments, they're poor, they like the coupons. But on normal days, it's not so bad. Now, there are 400 deliveries on this route, which means he does some sort of equation to determine how many deliveries I have to do per minute, which comes out to something like 1.3 before adding, come on, you're into computers. <laughs> then he adds, you can do this. They're poor, and you're an American. <laughs> <laughs> 3 p.m. rolls around, and I'm doing a slow but steady job. I turn around and Craig is there. He's watching me as I carry the route, just standing there, watching. <laughs> After a few deliveries, Craig takes me aside and says, I don't see the attitude. I don't expect you to have the technique, but you don't have the attitude. <laughs> he grabs my satchel away, sticks out his tongue, and shuffles in place in what I guess is an impression of me. Like, <laughs> he hands it back. I can't have you out here past four. A white boy like you in this neighborhood, you'll get shot. Just work on your attitude. He leaves. I carry past four. I don't get shot. <laughs> February 20th. I go with Mike, the senior TE, to Mission Valley to pick up the express mail. Mike drives a large SUV with a, with a license plate that reads something like Michelob. <laughs> on the way, he tells me to Watch out for the regular carriers. As a TE, the most important thing to do is shut up and do whatever management says. No complaining, no filing with unions, nothing. We are expendable. Mike's speech touches me. <laughs> for the past few days, I've wanted to retreat back to the safety of internet content, search engine optimization, 
and key terms. I would go home close to tears with this crushing sense of alienation that I would never make it in this industry. But this is the first time during my employment that someone has offered any sort of camaraderie. It's the first time I feel a sense of altruistic pride in anything that I've done. And when we drive past the college area, my comments about how tiny girls with big old titties <laughs> are amazing. <laughs> March 1st, I'm delivering an honest-to-God rooster overnight express <laughs> to an apartment complex right off El Cajon Boulevard. <laughs> now, according to the USPS website, these are the live animals that you can send through the mail. Bees, adult fowl, and scorpions <laughs> for anti-venom purposes. But who's to say your ex isn't an anti-venom specialist? <laughs> I stand in front of some rundown apartments and hold the, the box containing the live bird like an oversized lunchbox. An early morning hood rat walks by, bears a gold-plated smile. Nice cock, she says. <laughs> I, s I say thanks. <laughs> the customer is a robust man who wears smoky aviators and fiddles a giant plastic diamond on his pinky finger. Got my bird, he asks. I just need your signature right here. The man signs. His nails are immaculate. No way this guy is into urban farming. <laughs> I hand the box over. He lifts it to his ear and shakes it like a Christmas present. The rooster makes some gobbling sound, which delights him to no end. Is it going in there? I nod toward his kitchen. What? Food. That's <laughs> uh, not food. Thank you. He closed the door in my face. My scanner beeps, demanding the information written on the man's pink delivery slip. I can't make out his handwriting, so I type in my boss's name and scan the man's signature into the machine. I am still waiting for the day that police discover Craig's underground cockfighting ring. <laughs> March 3rd, two girls holler, sexy mailman, <laughs> at me from a McDonald's drive-thru. Makes slash ruins my day. March 10th. <laughs> I'm running the collection route along El Cajon Boulevard. I open the box at 63rd and El Cajon, and the unmistakable smell of feces wafts out. Now, I don't want to pretend to be a master in shit detection, <laughs> but this isn't from an animal. Someone has finagled some human shit in there. <laughs> the physics and trajectory of someone dumping directly into the box seems impossible, which means someone had to pick it up and place it in. All of these realizations are profoundly sad. I leave the poo mail in there to finish the route, and for the next two hours, I can't help but feel intense sadness for the kid who won't get their birthday card because someone deuced in the collection box. When I finally get back to the station, I go up to Craig and say, um, I don't quite know how to tell you this, but someone crapped in the collection box. He tells me I have to pick up the mail anyway. Here's my dignity, kid. Happy fucking birthday. March 30th. Oh, they won't bite you. They'll just lick you to death. <laughs> uh, they won't bite you. They'll just lick you to death. Lick you to death. <laughs> Lady, first off, your dog will bite. And also, if you really think about it, being licked to death is far more terrifying than a little bite. <laughs> That's some Hellraiser shit. <laughs> April 5th. It is Sunday. My only day off. My wife and I go to the beach. The weather is beautiful. My mom calls from Utah. She tells me about a late spring snowstorm. The weather there is 30 degrees. I tell her that I'm on the beach. It's in the 70s. It's difficult to hear her over the sound of the waves. My mind wanders. I look to the houses that line the boardwalk of Pacific Beach, then the houses beyond that on Mission Bay, then Ocean Beach, 
Point Loma, the high-rise buildings of downtown, the rundown southeast neighborhoods where the 15 meets the 5, Encanto, South Park, University Heights, down in San Ysidro and Altai Mesa. And all I can think of is, tomorrow, each one of these houses will receive a goddamn penny saver. <laughs> Thank you. Ryan Bradford. <laughs>